guys, it's Kirsten Sophia. Nice to see ya. And today, guys, it's going to be 10 shocking fun facts about Denmark. Now, if you don't know this by now, then what are you doing on my channel? I am half Danish, half Bahamian, and I am currently living in Denmark. So I thought it would be cool and fun to give y'all some fun facts about Denmark. Some of these things I just found out when I had to do some research, and some of these things I already knew obviously so there are 10 facts there is a bonus one but 11 doesn't look good in a title but i asked you guys on instagram whether or not y'all wanted me to do a q a or give y'all some facts about denmark and there was a high demand for facts about denmark and by high demand i mean about 10 15 of y'all you know not that many people Aww. But I'm glad y'all go in and y'all, you know, choose something. Y'all actually interact with my posts. So thank you guys. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, go and do so and subscribe. Now y'all may notice that your girl looks shiny, but it is hot to have a whole afro. This is like my style. I always try to switch it up, but this is really hot, especially during the summer. So that's why y'all see me with like that little bun there. That is also my signature look. I've heard many people say that. And by many people, I mean my friends. <laughs> so for the first fact guys this is about walt disney everybody knows what disney is and who walt disney is this i found out a while ago it's not something i always knew but fun fact there's an amusement park here in denmark called tuli i made a video a while ago with makia where we went to tuli in copenhagen that is the second eldest or oldest amusement park in the world the first one is called Batten, which is also located here in denmark but the fun fact is walt disney visited tuli when it was built in copenhagen in 1843 and he was so inspired by the atmosphere and the mood so if you have haven't seen that video with me and Mikio did go check it out so you could see how it is and Walt Disney got so inspired that he created one of the most famous amusement parks in the world Disneyland how cool is that this floats into another fun fact that one of the first few visitors was Hans Christian Andersen. Hans Christian Andersen. And he was a famous writer, still famous to this day. And he got so inspired by the park, he wrote Nightingale. And he went on to write some of the most famous fairy tales in the world that also inspired Disney, Walt well, Disney, to create animations for it. For example, The Little Mermaid. Hans Christian Andersen wrote The Little Mermaid. But the fun fact here is that in the real story, The Little Mermaid actually dies. Now Walt Disney actually left that out because obviously that would give like the fairy tale like a little dark ending and with a fairy tale you want it to have that happily ever after. Some of the other stories Hans Christian Andersen wrote has been the Snow Queen which went on to inspire the movie Frozen. Another is the Ugly Duckling and there's so many others so go and google it. The next fact is that there's this whole um meme with these danish biscuits it's a blue tin and sorry i got some hair in my eye oh my gosh the struggle <laughs> there's this blue tin filled with danish cookies biscuits whatever and the joke is that every grandma has one of these but there's no cookies in them there are utensils like sewing kits and all kind of stuff in there the fun fact is they are from denmark they are baked here and shipped from denmark but they were actually made like the container is actually made so that you can reuse them hence why so many people use it for utensils or not utensils but whatever sewing kits and other stuff these biscuits actually taste better homemade my grandma makes the best homemade biscuits cookies whatever danish ones now the next fact is lego everybody should know what lego is like it's been around for many years lego was created by ola kirk Christensen in 1932 guys it was created in bilon denmark it's a city where one of our airports is because Legoland is actually located in the city it was created and it's really close to the airport. So if you ever drive to that airport, you should be able to see Legoland. But the name is actually an abbreviation of the Danish term light gut, which means play well, play good. So what they did is they took the first two letters of the word, so light, L-E, gut, G-O, and put it together and got lego so it was created in 1932 but the first lego land actually opened in 1968 in bilun and now there are eight lego lands worldwide there are in they are in i had to write it down they are in denmark 
duh germany the uk malaysia dubai japan florida and california so if you are located in one of these countries or visiting make sure you go check it out it's actually a really wonderful experience obviously made for like kids but like everybody's a child at heart and lego has been in all of our lives but it is an amazing experience to go and see because there's like basically everything is made out of lego like the rides are made out of lego obviously there's some more mechanic stuff going on they also have like here in denmark because i haven't been to other ones in other countries but they have made like for example the whole Copenhagen or different spots around the world out of lego like a whole town an airport or whatever and it's really cool so i would really recommend it now this fact i think a lot of people actually know this in denmark we do have free education and free health care for the free education i think it starts around when you start going to first grade because for example kindergarten i think you actually pay for that but then after that education is free but that is the perks of a high tax rate in denmark we pay around i think it's about 30 percent maybe more if i'm not sure but i think it's around 30 percent and that is extremely high but we do get a lot of benefits by paying such a high tax rate for example when you turn 18 and you start going to a higher education which means like high school or college university or just a profession what's called an academic profession school or getting an ap degree whatever you can get money for going to school and that's also because of people paying taxes and i think the rate is for example if you're living at home with your parents you get around 520 dollars us dollars and if you live away from your parents because the further away you live from your parents the more you get and you can get around 1045 dollars american dollars per month and at some point they they start taking taxes from this as well but when it comes to receiving money for your education there's something called the su clip because the money you get is called su and to some extent you can keep getting that because you can't keep going to school and then changing a degree because you're like oh well i don't want to study news anymore now i want to study psychology you can't keep doing that because at one point you could have done that but now they made it more strict so you have a certain amount of clips where you can get some financial aid and go to school for free otherwise once those clips are done you have to start paying and i think it's a good idea that you pay such a high tax rate because you get so many benefits from it and you can really see that not only the rich are privileged not only the rich gets to go to school or this and that so it's it's very equal it feels very equal here in denmark now this is the fact i found out when i was doing my research because this is about drinking age i know that the drinking age to buy is 16 when it comes to beer for the hard liquor it is 18. there is actually no age restriction to actually drink alcohol so you can be under 16 and still be at home drinking beer or whatever it is there it is not illegal so kids can actually drink alcohol at home or for example in public if it's in a bottle like police over here are kind of lenient about it so i don't think they're going to run after some kids who has um alcohol unless they're like very obnoxious then it's going to be a problem but if you're in your house and your parents allow you whatever the case is you can drink and it's legal so with this I actually do feel weird about it because I feel there should be an age limit now 16 to and bare maybe that's okay but in general here in Denmark young kids do drink a lot young people drink a lot and I think that is also something that's known and I don't know if it's because we actually have viking blood in us and back then y'all they drank like crazy so I don't know if that has anything to do with that but there you have that fact the next fun fact or shocking fact bluetooth as you all know because like everything is so technological now and everything is online wireless this and that so you have cross paths with the word bluetooth now this word derives from denmark apparently so this name dates back a thousand years ago to a king here in denmark called king harold blotten bluetooth Gormson. Now he was known for two things. He united Denmark and Norway in 958 and he had a dead tooth that was like a gray bluish color. Hence why his nickname was Blotent which means blue tooth in Danish. So this nickname became a thing when nowadays everything is so technological people trying to find a new name. You know sometimes people find a name that has a meaning and just like with Bluetooth, you connect, for example, your headphones to your computer or your phone and everything is just so wireless. Bluetooth, in the way that the king united Denmark, 
and Norway, that connection gives the meaning of Bluetooth. I thought that was pretty cool. Now here in Aarhus, my hometown, there's a museum called the Viking Museum and I read it there. I thought that was so shocking, but also I just love history when it's like fun facts like that, that you know, like for example, we all know Bluetooth and then to find out it derived from like a king in Denmark, it's just like, that blows my mind. And I love stuff like that. <laughs> So this next fun fact or a shocking fact, because this is shocking to me y'all. This is a show, a stop motion animated show for children called John Dillamant. Now, if I had to really translate it, it's called John PP Man, because it's about a man and his very long PP. I don't know if I can say the word on YouTube and I'm not here to get, you know, cut or whatever it's called, a band or whatever. But it's literally about a man and his pee pee, y'all. <laughs> and this is for kids. This is for four to eight years old. The show has one season so far with 20 episodes. I remember this coming out in January and it went worldwide because everybody was like, is this serious? And it's like, of course, Denmark would make a a show about a guy and his, you know, pee pee. <laughs> but I can read what it says on Wikipedia. So John Dillman is a middle-aged man who wears a red and white striped bathing costume. He has a pee pee that can extend to a length of dozens of meters. John uses his prehensile pee pee, <laughs> which stretches through his clothes as a tool such as to tame lions or to fly about like a helicopter. So yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about having my kids watching it because I don't know, but maybe, I don't know. I haven't actually seen it. I've only seen pictures. So would you let your kids watch it or would you watch it yourself? The next fact is about our capital city, Copenhagen. Our pedestrian street downtown in Copenhagen is the longest pedestrian street in the world this i didn't know it's actually the eldest as well because i'm looking down at my notes it's the eldest oldest i don't know when you use both i did not know this i know it's extremely long because i walk i walk it so many times every time i'm in copenhagen i walk back and forth so to be exact it is 3.2 kilometers which is two miles so it's just a long path with shops restaurants cafes all kind of stuff on each side the next one is about Denmark's crime rate. Denmark is one of the safest countries in the world. And if you live here, you would know that to be true. Many times I've been out in my younger days. I'm 24 year old, but sometimes I do feel, <laughs> I feel old. When I was younger, I used to go out a lot and I would come back home because here they have night buses that you can take. And when I walk back home, I, it takes about probably like eight minutes to walk from the bus stop to my grandparents house and it was at night this is probably like around 2 a.m 4 a.m maybe and it's just pitch dark and i would not feel scared at all because i don't even worry about oh my gosh is someone's gonna follow me is someone gonna jump out the bush is someone gonna kidnap me none of that like you don't think about that at all when you're here in denmark half of the time i could even leave my house unlocked and go to the store and don't think twice like oh my gosh someone's gonna break in but now that i'm saying this on camera i'm not gonna do that because if y'all know where i live and you're like she for sure leaves her door her door unlocked i'm not gonna do that anymore but that's just to give you the sense of how how safe it feels to live in denmark which is way different compared to the bahamas which i am born and raised there do not leave your doors unlocked if y'all want another strange you know fun fact about the bahamas let me know i will do that but just to give a comparison because the crime rate here is low denmark is actually top five of the safest country so the first one is iceland second one is new zealand third portugal 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 i don't know that sounds weird when i say it <laughs> fourth austria and then denmark i have two more facts so this one is called yente lawen this is called a giant or gentle law now it's not really a law it's more of a, a norm it's just a set of unspoken norms that we have here in denmark to be honest it's not even spoken about so much it's just something you know like if you're in if you have a history class you hear about it i've never actually gotten the vibe of this law now it's actually a weird law so let me explain there are 10 laws i'm gonna read them up because i have not memorized them so the first one is du skal ikke to du anul. that means you should not think that you are something like you shouldn't think that you're something because you're nothing <laughs> that's what i'm interpreting 
stack in one. Du skal ikke tro, at du er lige så meget som os. You should not think that you are just like us. You shouldn't think that you are smarter than us. I'm just gonna try and translate. You shouldn't convince yourself that you are better than us. You shouldn't think that you are more than us. You shouldn't think or believe, because tro means believe, but you can also say think. You should not believe that you are capable of anything. You should not laugh at us, and you shouldn't believe that no one likes you. You shouldn't believe that you can teach us anything. And these are strictly like, what the, you know? But I believe it's more of a law so that it creates equality in the country. And I think this is actually a Scandinavian law. I don't know if it's just Denmark, but it's just so that you don't perceive yourself as being better than other people. And that's okay, but these laws are like, you shouldn't think that you're something, cause you're nothing. And it's like, what? <laughs> Because I haven't witnessed this or experienced this, so I don't know how how much people, you know, partake in this law. But it also says that this law was put so you're putting society ahead of the individual, not boasting about individual accomplishments and not being jealous of others. The last fun fact, guys, is that here in Denmark, we have a tradition that if you're 25 are not married, your friends, maybe also your family, but more than so, it's your friends, they throw cinnamon on you so they could tie you up to a pole a tree whatever it is and they just start throwing cinnamon so this is like the cinnamon challenge just crazier like they throw so much cinnamon i think there's also some other traditions for different ages like i think there's one when you're 30 as well but i can't remember but that was the end of these shocking slash fun facts about denmark i hope you guys enjoy there are so many more facts about denmark i could go on so like i said in the video if you want me to do one about the bahamas let me know in the comments or DM me contact me on any social media platform that I am available on make sure y'all are subscribed turn on your post notifications like comment whatever and I'll see y'all in the next video bye